been watching what's going on across the country. UConn just went down at number three, and earlier tonight in the ACC, second rank NC State suffering their first loss to Virginia Tech. So Virginia Tech in the ACC has played in more close games than anyone. They've played seven games that they did not win, decided by less than 10. They were 0-5 in games decided by less than five. That was a huge win at home for Kenny Brooks and his club. 26 points for the Hokies in that overtime period to knock off NC State. It was a Wolfpack team without Elisa Kinane, so not quite at full strength. We'll see if they get her back for their matchup against Louisville. That one coming up on Monday. Take a look at that starting five for the Cardinals. You see the first time Dixon and Cochran starting together. Good size to counter the interior size of North Carolina with Janelle Bailey on the floor. And Dana Evans gets the first points of the game. I think Dana Evans has been watching what's been going on today. And if you're in Louisville, you want to make a statement right away, Jen, as we take a look at North Carolina's starting lineup. You want to make a statement. You want to put this game away early if you can. Starting five for the Tar Heels. They've switched it up several times this season, but this is the same lineup that started their last game, a win against Notre Dame, their first win of the calendar year. Shot clock running down. Bailey had to turn around and launch it. Well, I'm not sure Utsby had re-established herself in the court when she touched that basketball, so interesting. Third game this week for Louisville as they had a close one on the road at Wake Forest last Sunday. Then they had a rescheduled game against Miami on Tuesday. Courtney Banghart has had her share of busy weeks as well. Pretty much everyone's season at some point or another has been impacted by COVID. And Coach Banghart just hoping her team's kind of getting their groove back now, Debbie, that they had the long break over the holidays. That's also when they got hit with their COVID pause. They had three straight losses after that. Now coming in here off a win. Jen, we know I see the game through an offensive lens and so does Courtney Banghart. Okay, they have moved the ball better. Their shot selection has been better. That's part of the reason why they were able to beat Notre Dame in their last game. You know, you've got to move the ball in this league. You can't have ball stoppers on your team. And North Carolina is evolving quickly into being a much better offensive team. Stephanie Watts was certainly a big part of that in the last game. The last two, she's really come alive for the Tar Heels. SB gets bottled up inside with the fiery freshman for Jeff Walls, Haley Van Lith. Jeff starting two freshmen on this number one ranked Louisville team this season. And Always quick to point out that despite all the talent, this is a fairly inexperienced group when it comes to big game experience. So they got some good close games in earlier this week, had some possessions where they had to make plays. Plays under duress, game deciding plays and decisions, and that's where Dana Evans comes in. And that's why she's a candidate for not just an All-American, but for Player of the Year. She will maybe get one of those Player of the Year awards. She certainly is in the running for it, and her name is in the conversation. Dixon gets a couple more points. 6-0 run to start the game for Louisville. I like the full court pressure by Louisville. The last possession, North Carolina tried to take advantage of one of those mismatches with Utsby size against Van Lith. There they dive her to the block again. I Got like the way time. Courtney Banghart is thinking. Usby, one of two freshmen to start for the Tar Heels, along with Deja Kelly in this lineup. Looking for the mismatches. That was one of your keys, Debbie, for North Carolina. Were they to come in here and try to hang with Louisville? Balagoon knocks down the three. Really nice job of playing inside out. So we see Louisville getting their baseline game established, picking up full court pressure. This is the kind of tempo that you're trying to make a statement with early. Watts. And to Doc from Lou Chitenge, who spins but walks. Watch the inside out play to set up the three-point shooting. It's a great job by Cochran 
wide open Balagoon in the corner. And the best thing about Cochran is after she passed it, she started to repost and then went to get an offensive rebound. Kelly Van Lith joins the scoring party for the Cardinals. That's four Louisville players who have scored so far. Debbie, North Carolina said they wanted to run with Louisville. They wanted to go at them, but right now it is the Cardinals taking the lead, and that was a much needed bucket by Watts for North Carolina. Well, Stephanie Watts is playing better, and she's playing like a fifth year senior who's been around the block a couple of times. She certainly is familiar with the ACC arenas. Good offensive rebound there from Balagoon. She has seven. See, and Balagoon loves the challenge defensively of taking on a player like Stephanie Watts. Let's see if she can shut down Watts coming off that big game against Notre Dame. Bailey into the paint, preseason ACC selection. She gets her first points. See, that was pretty good defense. You gotta make Bailey make a play. If she wants to put it on the floor, stay between her and the basket. Evans called for it. Cochran got the offensive rebound. Watts will try another. That one not quite as on target as her first attempt. Deja Kelly diving to the floor as she saw just a moment of weakness there from Dana Evans as her handle got away from her. Well, it's going to be interesting for Deja Kelly to try to stay in front of Dana Evans. I'm not sure there's anybody in the league that can stay in front of Dana. Watts that time getting a hand onto the basketball. Imagine it's going to be a collective effort there at Debbie as North Carolina tries to slow down Evans. And Elizabeth Balagood, a player who's been picking up her numbers here of late. I think Elizabeth Balagoon has matured into being a very good defensive player who wants to be a pro one day, and she understands you got to be a two-way player. And she has added to that part of her game, and it's actually helped Louisville putting her length on people that they need to stop. Van Lip lines it up, knocks it down. Bailey, Watts gets an easy two there. Watts coming off a season high, 25 points. You mentioned that good game for her. She actually was an assist away from a triple-double against Notre Dame. 12 rebounds, nine assists. Good work in that game. Dixon stepping away to the baseline, knocking down a face-up shot, pulling Bailey away to have to defend on the perimeter. The Janelle Bailey mostly operates in the high post now. Very seldom do, does she work block to block. She's become more of a face-up than she has a back-to-the-basket player. Kelly forced that one up a bit, but all five Louisville starters have scored to Debbie, including Haley Van Lith from downtown. Game 
last year. All right, who thinks it is A, Jasmine Jones versus Syracuse? All right, how about B, Elizabeth Malagoon versus Oregon? And who thinks the correct answer is C, Marie Pono versus NC State? Let's see that correct answer. It's Elizabeth Malagoon versus Oregon. She covered 5.5 miles during that win. We thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for playing today's JV Speed School of Engineering Tech Trivia. We fit, get to the second part of the first quarter. And Dana Evans last year, ACC tournament, last game for Louisville. At the end, Florida State wins in the semis and advances to the finals to take on NC State. Dana Evans didn't finish. It was a play that she remembered the entire summer. She didn't make the play. She didn't make the right read. And look what she's done since. She's used that opportunity in the ACC tournament last year to be the closer in these four games to allow Louisville to be 15-0 and undefeated in the ACC. That's why she's a closer. That's why she's a finisher. Her confidence is off the charts right now. She's the only senior for Louisville, and she's played like a player with a sense of urgency, especially in the late game. Debbie, she is. Come on, I gotta hear your term. I love it for Dana Evans. She she's a ticket selling player. She's ticket oh, well selling. That, that too. I mean, I had to dig that out. I haven't used that much <laughs> since like the Ivory Latta days at North Carolina. If Ivory's watching her old team, she knows what I'm talking about. Untrappable, Untrappable and un unflappable. There it is. Had to dig in the archives for that one. The Antonelli archives. <laughs> Off the bench is Petra Holoshinska, who also is coming off a big game, a season high 24 in the win over the Fighting Irish. Holoshinska and Watts have both had some time where they've come off the bench and had big games for the Tar Heels. Well, I think Coach Courtney, Coach Courtney Banghart has done a great job of coaching them up. Them up. They're shooters. Courtney was a shooter. They've put in the reps. That's hey, Haley Van Lynn thinks her third. So here's my other thing. Jen might as well dump it all right now. Haley, you can go ahead and shoot till your arm falls off. You got three triples in the first quarter. We're going to empty the Antonelli bucket right here in quarter number one. With number one, Louisville right now, doubling up North Carolina. Tar Heels just trying to keep up at this point as Watts draws the foul from Balgoon. Haley Van Litt, so strong and powerful, that lower body allows her to D and to get into the rhythm of her shot. I think she's got a high IQ, her handle is outstanding. She's an impressive freshman. And she has just fit in seamlessly with what Louisville likes to do. Bailey left open inside, makes him pay. Now that'll be an ugly piece of film tomorrow in the Louisville film room. Kiana Smith in off the bench, number 14 for Louisville. Transfer from Cal. Narika Kono as well. Yes. And oh yeah, Dana Evans still doing her thing. She has four. I mean, forget about it. She calls her own number when she sees a mismatch. She patiently lets the game come to her. She's got complete management over what Jeff Walls wants to do. 
Kennedy Todd Williams, one of five freshmen on this North Carolina team that account for about 50% of the Tar Heels scoring on the season. See, there's an advantage, uh, North Carolina, in that matchup, and that's one of the things that we thought North Carolina had to do to get a W on the road. But let me go back to that point about Coach Banghurt. You know, her, she was a shooter. I mean, she's got the Ivy League record for three-point makes, 273. That's a lot of threes. So when you're dealing with shooters that are in slumps and you know that they have put in the reps, their technique is fine, it's a matter of confidence. You got to keep building confidence. So Coach Banghurt showed them film. She worked with them by rebounding, uh, getting up some extra shots. I mean, she understands what it takes. That's the mental side of it. And you got two veteran players in Watts and Holoshinska that you have to have score outside the arc for you to be successful. Those two bringing in some experience, albeit not with Courtney Banghart, both transferring in as graduate transfers, although Watts, of course, was at North Carolina before she transferred away to USC. Cochran now has a couple more four points for her, and Louisville just continues its torrid shooting, 73% from the floor so far. Too much dribbling in the middle of the floor. Good help by Van Lith. Mikasa Robinson is on the floor for Louisville, gets it to come up from the free throw line and some bench points to help the Cards cause. North Carolina, just dial it up right now, Jen. Anything you want, you can get offensively. Todd Williams had it blocked by Cochran. That ball kick, so it'll stay here with Louisville. Remind you that coming up on Sunday, more women's basketball here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Notre Dame and Syracuse start to early, 11 a.m. Eastern. Then at 2, Clemson and Wake Forest. Virginia Tech coming off their big win, hosting this North Carolina team in Blacksburg. Well, North Carolina has got to do a better job defensively, right? Louisville's missed five shots, and they have offensive rebounded four of them. That's a very high offensive rebounding percentage. That's one that I know Muffin McGraw has sat up straight in her chair in the studio listening to that. <laughs> that got her attention. And perhaps this first quarter performance by Louisville catching some people's attention too. You said, Debbie, that maybe Louisville, see what else had gone on. Number two went down yep. tonight. Number three right. went down tonight. Number one, Louisville is trying to tell everybody they fully intend to stay where they are. It's totally a statement game, Jen. I told you before the game, before we came on the air, we're going to see what Louisville's made of. What kind of team do they want to be? Their first quarter will dictate to us what, who they are. And who they are is a bunch of winners. They want to win. They've got a 30 to 16 point lead at the end of the first quarter. Their D is good, but their offense is much better. Points in the first quarter this season for the Cards, and they are finally getting this opportunity to play North Carolina, as you see there, this game, Debbie, was supposed to happen, well, a couple times. And if you count the time change on today, this is the fifth date slash time that this game has attempted to be played this season to, to a variety of reasons, such as this season so far and the flexibility that all teams and coaches are required to have to survive. Coaches, players, administrators, referees. I mean, the whole thing has been amazing. Uh, the ACC office had a meeting with us yesterday on a call, and they were showing uh, the detail with which they've been operating. But, you know, everybody's working hard behind the scenes. Everybody's doing their job well so far. Got another big game rescheduled. Perhaps a little bit of the shine taken off. It may not be one and two for NC State and Louisville coming up on Big Monday, but we all know what a big game that really still is for these two teams, especially if the Wolfpack can get at least a Kanane back. 
as you see some of the chaos that has plagued all of sports, really, in this past year. Well, I did have a chance to speak to Wes Moore, the head coach at NC State, who ironically is sitting on 737 wins in his career, which is exactly the number that Kay Yao finished her career at. So his next number, his next win will be passing Kay Yao at 738. Uh, but he, he was um, encouraged by Kunay, and she did go through shoot around today. I do think she'll play on Monday. And uh, hopefully they can get a, a couple of things ironed out and fixed before they got to take on the number one team. And I don't think NC State's going to fall that far in the polls, considering that UConn lost on the road as well. Van Lip continues to stroke it, had nine points on three triples in the first quarter. That her first two point bucket. Well, the Sheenska couldn't get that one in. Well, Haley Van Lith brought a, the A game. She will, she's talking about making a statement. She's like, you can't just worry about guarding Dana Evans. How about me? Look at this lefty stroke outside the men's line. Every time she lines up, it's the black line that she's shooting from behind, not the white line, which is the women's line. Three for three outside the three-point line. And now you got to come with a long closeout, and she's going to drive right by you. She is a three-level scorer as a freshman. Cochran has also been pretty solid in her first year with the Cardinals. Six points in the game now for the 6'3 freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. You know, in North Carolina is not shooting it that poorly. Uh, actually, they're doing a decent job. They've just got to do a better job on the glass. And they got to get some stops. Yeah, Louisville has pretty much had its way on this end of the floor. It's Kiana Smith drives and can't quite get the friendly roll. Watts, quick shot. Look at Mikasa Robinson. She's one of my favorite players to watch in the entire ACC. And, and it, this is somebody who loves scoring, right? Mikasa's not on the floor to score. She's on the <laughs> floor to rebound, to D up, make the entry pass, to cut hard, to run the floor hard. She does all the things that don't show up in the stat sheet. And that coaches and teammates appreciate. Watch this traffic rebound, two hands, Goes up and keeps her balance. Olivia Cochran. Cochran now has eight. Whatever Louisville wants, they can get right now offensively. North Carolina hasn't been able to take anything away. And that's a good play by Deja Kelly right there. The, when the big jumps out on a hedge, like Cochran did. You go right at that outside hip, try to draw a foul. That's exactly what she did. First personal foul against Cochran. And Deja Kelly, one of two players along with Janelle Bailey, who started every game so far this season for North Carolina. Freshman, former McDonald's All-American out of San Antonio. Here is Kelly. Anya Poole in off the bench for the offensive rebound. Pick a Dana across the floor, skip pass. Louisville runs the lanes. Phil behind a penetration. Robinson is going to take a shot. She usually doesn't. <laughs> they are few and far between. She only has eight made field goals on the entire season and plays an awful lot of minutes, averages over 17 per game. I think every coach wishes they had a player that could add value and you don't have to worry about them having the ball in their hands. They don't worry about scoring, they do so many other things. Boy, Louisville right now really hitting the glass, Debbie, and that was a point of emphasis for Jeff Walls after his team really struggled on the glass at Wake Forest last Sunday. The Demon Deacons 
nearly pulled off the upset. Be their first ever win against number one, but couldn't quite do it. And they hit the glass hard, and Jeff emphasized that to his team afterward. I mean, collision near midcourt with Cochran yeah. and Holoshinska. Bodies flying all over the place after that last play. It was called a foul on Holoshinska. Zone by the Tar Heels. They showed one possession of zone in the Notre Dame game, and that was late. Smith. I think it's a good change, Jen. You know, J Courtney Banger has to try something else. Boy, another big collision there. That time it's Poole and Robinson who both go down. Good post inside by Poole. Trying to take advantage of her size against Robinson. But see, that's the other thing that Mikasa Robinson, she guards one through five. <laughs> you can switch when she's out there. She can hold her own in a post. She'll go to the bench after getting called for that foul. Holoshinska, Zahn opening, hits it. Yeah, she starts seeing a big basket. That's good news for the Tar Heels. It's just a 15-point game. She knocked down six of them, Debbie, against the Irish. That was certainly a big part of how North Carolina got that win. Came in here with a little bit of confidence. Evans, speaking of confidence, drains it. I mean, Janelle Bailey rotates out on the back of that zone. And I'm surprised she didn't drive her to the hole. Instead, she shoots a three with a hand in her face. Come on. Because <laughs> she can. Kelly drives the other end. Strong performance all around both ends of the floor by the Cardinals. So far in this one, 41-25, Dana oh. Evans drains it, and the Cardinals are up big on the Tar Heels. Number one, Louisville looking good at home, 41-25, the score over the Tar Heels in our second quarter. Debbie, let's talk a little bracketology, shall we? Because North Carolina in a precarious position at the moment. Charlie Brackets comes out with his last four in, and there's the heels. And then you see the first four out, Notre Dame and Wake Forest. Let me just say this about Jenny Mitchell's team, Jenny Hoover. 1988, <laughs> last time Wake was in the NCAA tournament was when Jen Hoover was a great player in this league. And I think this is the best team she's had. So I'm not counting them out. And of course, Virginia Tech stays in a conversation because of their win today. Now they got to make some noise though. They've got some, you know, quad one wins in, in the net and they've got some opportunity had all the teams do. And North Carolina certainly, this is a big one for them here, but they also have winnable games coming up on their schedule. And actually on Sunday, North Carolina and Virginia Tech will meet. So that will be a big one for the ACC. Steps there by Janelle Bailey. And you mentioned Wake Forest a moment ago. Demon Deacons picking up a win tonight over Florida State, 73-59. See, that's a huge win for Wake Forest. I said at the beginning of the year that their uh, predicted um, preseason pick was too low. Of all the teams on our first show that the ACC Network did on women's basketball, they actually let me participate. And I said Wake Forest was a team that I had high expectation for. I knew this would be her best team. I didn't know if it would result in Ws, but it certainly has. Yeah, Cochran gets the bucket there. A chance for a three-point play. And 
Quick Forest just to finish up your point there, Debbie. That evens him out at five and five in conference play. And Jeff Walls will be the first to tell you he thinks it's the best team Jen Hoover has had there. He saw sure. it firsthand. Well, if you've been around enough and you've studied the league long enough, then you would, you know, you would know. That just means I'm probably old. Some people will say old. Others might consider it experience. Wisdom, Debbie. <laughs> Wisdom, Wisdom could be another one you might use. Deja Kelly going to the free throw line. Tell you about Packer and Durham, everybody's favorite show to start the day, or it should be. 7 a.m. Eastern right here at ACCN and the ESPN app. They're going to look back tomorrow at the 24-year career of ACC Commissioner John Swafford, who is retiring this year. He has been such a phenomenal leader for this league and is the longest tenured commissioner in the 68-year history of the ACC. Well, we send our best wishes to John Swafford and Nora in their retirement and enjoying their grandchildren and playing golf and doing the things that they love to do. But we might not be sitting here on the ACC network if it wasn't for Commissioner Swafford and what great support he has always lent towards not just women's sports, but in particular how much he loves basketball. Certainly do appreciate all that he has done in his time. It'll be missed. Kelly good sticks job. with it. Yeah, good job keeping your dribble alive. But see, that's the shot chart for Bailey. Courtney Banghart told us today to look at her shot chart, and those are the shots that she takes now. She lost that weight down 40 or 25 pounds to start the season. She's a career 15 and 9 player, but most of that was with her back to the basket. Now she's facing up. Do you like that change? Well, I think she has aspirations to play professionally, so I think she believes that she needs to have a face-up game. But I think sometimes for North Carolina's success, she might need to be on the block a little bit so she can impact the game that way. Pick up fouls on the front line, put some pressure on Louisville's size. You know, a lot of teams don't guard her out there. And it takes her away from rebounding as well, too, Jen. Yeah. Bailey, a former ACC Rookie of the Year in this league, was a first-team All-ACC pick last season. Did pick up her second personal foul on that last play. And Dixon's wanting to go right back at her. That time, Dixon stuck with it and did draw the foul. If it was against Bailey, that'll be number three. And it was. Well, you know what, I, I, I'm a, I studied the analytics of the game. I think there's a lot of coaches right now that don't have the two foul rule, meaning I support what Courtney Banghart did by leaving her in the game. If you're gonna win, you gotta have her on the floor, right? So you take a chance with two fouls and leave her out there, and then she picks up her third. So now she has to sit. Just four points in the game so far for Bailey. The leading scorer for the Tar Heels average is just under 15 for the season. Also their leading rebounder at 8.2. Pretty deep hole here for North Carolina as Ruval has been clicking, but talked to Jeff Walls today. He said he's had his team at times get a bit sluggish when they've had leads. So their challenge certainly will be to keep their focus and keep playing at the level that they have started this game with. Well, the other thing too is like most teams, you know, they are fatigued and Louisville might be tired. Uh, but if you are tired, what you do is you, you get a sweat going early and you press, you got enough depth. Play hard, we'll sub you when you need to come out. But in order to be the elite level team that they aspire to be and meaning you get to the final four regularly and be in the conversation regularly, that's what they are, and then you have to put your stamp on the game early. Holoshinska still fighting and she'll go to the line for North Carolina. Haley Van Lith picked up the foul. I mean, consider this, Jen, that you know, Jeff Walls did lose three starters to 
two what got drafted in the first round, right? And you rebuild with the talent that you have. You continue to recruit, and you're now you're the number one team. First time they've been the number one team in the 14 years. And when he looks at that number one, he thinks not of just this team. He thinks of all the players and the staff that he's had that have allowed them to build the program to be in consideration to be the one team. They've had quite a run. And Dana Evans certainly <laughs> puts the exclamation point on all of that. That she does. Reigning ACC Player of the Year. Last three of those awards have gone to the Cardinals. Asia Durr winning it two times before Dana. I mean, are you kidding me? 6'3", moving your feet like that? I mean, come on. A freshman, that is a tremendous defensive play. Cochran's showing her presence on both ends. 11 points, five rebounds. Some good defense. Balagoon. Three is good, as it has been most of the night so far for Louisville. Cardinals, 7 of 13 from deep. So that zone was part in part to change the rhythm of the game, in part to protect Janelle Bailey. And Louisville is just raining triples right now. Three different players have made multiple threes for Louisville. Dana Evans with the ball in her hands. Her decision how to handle these last few seconds of the first half. Cochran, how about the three? What? Come on, Debbie. <laughs> Olivia Cochran, are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. I know, we've got pitching a perfect game right now. Six for six, including the first three of her career. She has been outstanding playing D. has got five rebounds, even an assist. No one in foul trouble for the Cardinals. A little icing on the cake there with that three to end the first half, the first half stats. We told you, Louisville shooting it really well. 57% from the floor and from three. And North Carolina will have to come out in this third quarter trying to make up some ground. Well, 11 assists on 21 baskets is a good ratio. They didn't get to the free throw line as much, but when they did, they made them. Uh, this is a, a really solid looking Louisville team with everything working. Check the boxes off because they've got it all, including depth and the ability to make shots under duress. Evans, can another one. We started the game talking about a statement and I think Louisville certainly showed that they were ready to play and that with everything that's transpired today with the upsets of NC State and UConn, uh, losing on the road to Arkansas, Louisville's paying attention and they came out and they made a statement with their 55 first half points. This has been a busy and challenging week so far for Louisville. This is their third game of the week. They played on Sunday on the road at Wake Forest, were pushed given all they could handle by the Demon Deacons, winning that one by two. And then they had Miami on Tuesday in a rescheduled game. That was another close contest. They wound up winning that one by three, and here they are. They've watched some film. They've maybe done a bit of a walkthrough and a shoot around, but that's been about it as they try to stay fresh. Well, I always think head coaches have a good handle on the temperament of their team. They have a good feel for when they need to get rest and when they need Jump to get reps. And Jeff Wall certainly is in command of that with his group. Now think about this group. They've been together really since the beginning of June. They have had a stoppage in play due to COVID. But look at this balance in the first half. Four in double figures, led by Cochran, who, as you mentioned, a perfect six of six from the floor. Balagoon. Watts. 
transferred back into the North Carolina program this season. Coming back home, she said, after she started her career with the Tar Heels, was the ACC Freshman of the Year in 2016, and then spent three years healthy, had one year she did not play due to injury, transferred to USC, but only played four games there last season as she was injured. So she got a year back, and now here she is, a true veteran on this Tar Heel team that's filled with so much youth. Dixon back to Van Lith. Had her shot just a bit blocked, got it tapped as it was headed in. And we look at Bailey posting up inside, or that's uh, Chitangwe. No, I'm sorry, number 21 yep. for North Carolina posting up. That's her, right? Yep, Chitangwe, you were right. Yeah, she was posting up open. Posting up on this side, Dixon, she now has a... They share the ball, they move it, it doesn't get stuck. You know, I mean, Muffet McGraw in the studio, she can attest to this. When you haven't had a chance to play a, a tough schedule and, and you get in positions where you got to make game shots under game pressure, under duress. Louisville has experienced that. NC State has experienced it as well. Uh, those are the things that sharpen your knife, if you will. I mean, they just make you a tougher team. Evans into the paint. That's the pro hop, and that's the play that she made the winning basket against Wake Forest, that very same drive to the basket. Jump ball forced on this end by Van Lith. Good ball movement, good deep catch at the front of the rim. Well, that right there is America's play. Drive, baseline, screen, rescreen. Look for the three, and Watts puts it on the floor. This ball will go the other direction as it goes out off of Louisville. Casa Robinson coming back into the game as Cochran will get a little breather. Louisville started this game with a big lineup. Cochran and Dixon both starting together for the first time all season. So a different look from the Cardinals to start this one off. I mean, look look at Dana Evans has to roll down the lane with Chitangue. And North Carolina doesn't take advantage of that. See, Louisville switches and Chitangue rolls. And Dana takes the roller. She gets stuck on a roller and they don't find that. See, that's the next level for North Carolina's offense. You created that switch, you got to take advantage of it. It has certainly been a learning and growing process for this North Carolina team, which is so low on experience together this season. Good bucket from Dixon, who joins her other four teammates in double figures now. Chitenge. Turns around, See, gets it. Yeah, because she's got Mikasa Robinson on her at 5'7". So that's a good job right there by North Carolina to recognize that. Evans, three glances off, but Kiana Smith picks up the offensive rebound. Kiana Smith typically averages a double figure. She's the one player tonight for Louisville. That's just one for six from the floor. Well, everybody else has been carrying the load so far for the Cardinals. <laughs> Louisville starts the second half. Getting buckets in the paint. Elizabeth Dixon making herself available at the front of the rim.
Saturday, we'll have a big college basketball quadruple header that starts for you with Miami and Wake Forest. That's first up, followed by 16th-ranked Florida State and Georgia Tech. Then 8th-ranked Virginia, the only unbeaten team remaining in conference play, takes on 20th-ranked Virginia Tech. And finally, take a breath, it is Pitt hosting Notre Dame. You can catch those games on the ESPN app or right here on ACC Network. Well, Louisville's defense only giving up five points here in the third quarter. Tar Heels have struggled to get anything going offensively and defensively haven't been able to do much to slow Louisville down. Cardinals shot 57% in the first half, both overall and from three. Kiana Smith knocks one down as well. There you go. I mean, you don't know if Jeff Wall said, let's get Kiana going right now because she's the one that's not been able to get going, but that's just a really good recognition that, you know, they want to share the will. Robinson in there battling for the rebound. She's the one that comes away with it. There is a whistle. Timeout called by Jeff Walls and Louisville, and we'll take a quick break as well. Number one up 30 on North Carolina in the third quarter. Louisville rolling in the third quarter against North Carolina. This is their third game of the week. And if you look at their last three, there have been some numbers that haven't been their best. They've had their two lowest scoring games of the season. They had their largest deficit of the season, nine points in the fourth quarter against Wake Forest. Also shot under 40% for the only time all season against the Demon Deacons. And if they wanted to come in tonight and improve upon some of those things, a lot seems to be clicking so far, Debbie, for the cards. Well, again, I'm going to repeat the statement. You know, 55 points in the first half, the way they started the game. Uh, they were well aware of the current affairs of the state of the game today, and they aren't going to let anything pass them by. Like, they were on it, on point, moving the ball. Start the game the way you should start the game every 40 minutes. You know Jeff Walls well. Do you think... Were they, he probably wasn't talking about other results, or was he at some point today? I'm guessing he absolutely was talking about it. Like, did you see what happened here? Did you watch this? Okay, we've played in three close games. Your focus needs to be right now, and let's make a statement. That's what I'm thinking Jeff and his staff did with his the team's psyche before the game. Big statement game you see there. Big Monday on ESPN, 7 o'clock, when Louisville will take on NC State. Wolfpack currently ranked number two. Expect that to drop, though, as they lost tonight against Virginia Tech. Bailey back-to-back -back buckets there for North Carolina. But still, that matchup is one everyone, Debbie, has had their eyes on and been looking forward yes. to. As an AP poll voter, I can tell you, I will have Louisville at one. And at number two, I'm probably going to move South Carolina there. But I'm going to drop NC State just maybe one spot and drop UConn one spot. Because this is why I think NC State is so good and why I'm looking forward to the Louisville game. Three level scoring, too deep with their personnel. They get Kunane back, she's the axis. That's how they play, they play through her and to her. Perez still leads the ACC in assist turnover ratio. She is the manager of the tempo and the pace. And then stretch fours and hybrid fours. Jen, you've heard me talk about it before. Stretch fours, pick and pop, shoot the three. Hybrid fours, Pick and pop, shoot the three, but make decisions with the ball in their hands, and that's what Kayla Jones does for them. And I think Jakia Brown-Turner's a uh, potential All-American candidate for NC State as well. A lot of talent in that matchup, and that will be here at Louisville. It's the only meeting of the season between those two teams. It is a rescheduled game, and both programs giving kudos to the ACC for making sure they got that one rescheduled. Is that a foul, foul on Bailey? It was, yeah. yes. With the body. That, is, that was four on okay. her, Debbie. So look at the pivot and the footwork of Cochran in there going against a big, strong defender. 
She uses that pivot to create some separation and then tries to power through to get to the line. And the one other thing to button up the NC State thing, the one person I didn't mention is Kai Crutchfield, who could be the most important person in the matchup with Louisville because she is going to have to probably spend most of her night chasing Dana Evans around. No easy task. That should be a fun one for sure. And if anyone was wondering if Louisville might be overlooking the Tar Heels, doesn't look that way so far. Good seal. Cool. Great pass. Tar Heels, Debbie, have gotten their last three possessions, I believe, in the paint, couple to Bailey and that one to Poole. Much better off the last ATO. You know, the last three ATOs. Oh, I thought that was travel. Just looks like it was called out of bounds, so it'll stay with North Carolina. Usby. Freshman who has been fun to watch for North Carolina this season out of Rochester, Minnesota. Actually leads this Tar Heel team in field goal percentage, which typically is a statistic reserved for those post players who make their living in the paint, but Usby's done a good job. 56% from the floor on the season so far. Well, Usby has been terrific the last couple of games. She's 12 for 20 in the last two combined coming into this one. She's 6'1", she's got good frame, she's got good IQ, she has range to shoot the three. She's gonna be a really good player in the ACC. Good for her to see both those free throws go down as well. That's maybe been the one part of her game that's probably been a bit disappointing to her so far. She's just about 50% from the free throw line before those last two. And now Kiana Smith, if the intention was to get her heated up, she's gotten going for Louisville. Now let me say something as a shooter. That ball was passed to her, she had to drop her hands. When you make a shooter drop their hands, it takes them a little bit out of rhythm. Now she dropped her hips to catch that ball so that she didn't have to just bend from the waist and drop her hands. It's, a, well, it's what shooters do. Now the pass has got to be better. But that's that's how you become an elite team. Those are the details that you sharpen up. My son Patrick's a point guard and I tell him all the time, don't you ever make a shooter drop their hands when you pass the ball to him. I was a post player, Debbie. I knew I knew that. I knew to get post it player. Right into that bread basket. Yeah, I know. You can't believe that now, right? But true. Holoshitska's got another one. Her third triple. Holy Shinska. <laughs> that was deep. Smith from the corner. Louisville rolling. The number one team in the country has shooters, playmakers, and then they got Mikasa Robinson. Traffic rebound. This one, she's gonna take it away from the bigs in the middle of the floor. Gets the break started. How about Dean up in the post, getting a little help. And then at 5-7, look at this rebound right here. Hustle, stay after it. You gotta love Mikasa Robinson's heart and how much she loves to play and how much she loves her role. Cochran pushed her luck a little bit that time. That was her first miss. She knocked one down from long range earlier in the game, just before the half, the first of her career, but had been perfect otherwise. 17 points in the game for Cochran. Pretty hard foul that time by Cochran on pool. No layup zone. Anya Pool, 6'2 freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Started five games this season for the Tar Heels.
And Jeff Wall's able to get some of his players a bit of a rest at the moment. Dana Evans on the bench. Alana Smith into the game, number two. Must be off the glass and in. Good defense by the Tar Heels, still playing hard in this fourth quarter despite the large deficit. They knew it was going to be a tough challenge coming in here. Oh, boy. And it's stuck. Stuck on the phalange. <laughs> Which I, I had to it's go a, back. It's Friends, right? It's a Friends yeah. reference. The, yes. there's a yeah, there's something wrong with the phalange. <laughs> That's what that piece of the rim is called. <laughs> it's a very technical term. Pool calling for it, gets it in the paint, around and out. Evans back on the floor now for Louisville. This is Van Liff. Balagoon. Really good box on the weak side. North Carolina came into this game as one of the top rebounding teams, not only in the ACC, but in the country. They lead the ACC in rebounds per game, 44.8. That ranked fifth nationally. Now that's in all games overall. It's been a tougher road in this game in particular. It's Cardinals have been dominant on the boards. 30 to 25 the difference as North Carolina's picked up a couple off the glass here in these last few minutes. Good Must take. be a nice move. Beautiful. Get the one-on-one. -on -one. You play in D1, you got to score on a one-on-one. -on -one. Evans. Remember Louisville not wanting to lose their edge here. It can be tough. I mean, they've been up big, but North Carolina is cutting into that lead, making it a little more manageable. Well, here's the thing for Jeff Walls. You go to the bench and you sub, you demand the same level of play, and this will be a good time out for him to reorganize his group. Back in Louisville, where the Cardinals not only number one in the rankings, but holding on to one of those number one seeds, according to Charlie Cream and his bracketology. What say you, Debbie? Do you think we see any changes after some of the results from here uh, recently? No, I don't feel like I see any change there. I mean, NC State and UConn lose tonight. I'm not sure they fall off the one line. South Carolina, I believe Charlie Cream has the overall number one seed, which maybe Louisville might be thinking, hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. about that uh, because Louisville's undefeated and we'll see what happens on Monday when they play NC State because that's definitely a Q1 game for them. Uh, and then the two seeds, Maryland won by 40 tonight. Stanford and UCLA played once. I believe they play again. Uh, actually, I think they split on the season. They, they've already played twice. And then Baylor, uh, their only loss is to Arkansas on the road, and Arkansas is the team that beat UConn. So I'm not sure there's too much of a shuffle there. The best thing about the tournament this year, though, Jen, not just that we're all going to be in the same place in San Antonio, but that it's going to be on a true S-curve, which has yes. never happened in the women's game before. And that is exciting because, in, in my estimation, with the number of years that I've been around, the game deserves it. We don't need geography. We need to figure out a way to remove that element and do the true S-curve because the players and the coaches have earned the right to be on an S-curve, not be on a G-curve. And explain Which, exactly what that is, Debbie, the S-curve. It's a mathematical equation where you'll see one through 64 and you'll have a true seed line, one through 64. So one will play 64, two will play 63. And you know, it, that's the way that now, if you ask me about the transitive property or something else about math, I'm not going to be able to explain it. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But the S-curve, 
versus the G curve for geography, it's a big difference in the game. And I, and I, I think it's going to be uh, the players and the coaches are going to be rewarded for it. They've already earned it. Well, not to get too far away from what's happening here, Louisville has led by as many as 32 in this game, but North Carolina has crept back in. It's a 14-0 run by the Tar Heels as the Cardinals have gone over three and a half minutes without a field goal. It's still a big so, deficit, obviously, but not oh, the nice. way Jeff Walls wanted to see his team finish his game out. Yeah, nice pass through or fake handoff. They've been running that set. Good decision by Holoshinska. And the starters back on the floor with Mikasa Robinson. Well, North Carolina has made their last four field goals. Meanwhile, Louisville has turned it over. They've had passes that they've lost. They've had offensive fouls called against them. Just all of that flow and rhythm that we'd seen most of the night in their offense just has not been there really the last four minutes or so. Well, how about that play by Mikasa Robinson to draw a charge, to change the rhythm of the game? That's what she does. Now I'm sure North Carolina's looking at that like, hmm, that was a charge? I thought she <laughs> tripped. <laughs> But you need that sometimes. You need somebody to try to change the momentum. Let's see what Dana Evans can do on this end. Turns it over. Okay, so you start the game, you score 55 points in the first half. And then you learn something about your team right here about the ability to put it away. You've allowed North Carolina to get confident and to creep back in. Now your D has got to change the momentum of the game. Cochran rips it away. Gets it into the hands of Evans. Ten on the shot clock. Evans calls her own number. It's now been over six minutes without a field goal for Louisville, and North Carolina keeps on running. It's a 17-0 Tar Heel run. How about this? We got an 11-point game. What'd you say, 32, Jen? Yes, that's how 32 many Louisville led by. Lead. for Dixon and Louisville. Really good interior passing from the high-low. Watch this seal right here by Dixon with that big target. And Cochran throws the ball where only Dixon can catch it. Dixon transfer from Georgia Tech in her second year with the Cardinals. She and Balgoon both making that move from the Yellow Jackets to the Cards last year. North Carolina has been very good at aggressively attacking the rim. That's part of the reason why they've been able to get back in it. And they're doing this without Janelle Bailey. As soon as Bailey picked up that fourth foul, North Carolina has been able to go on this run. Well, that is a great point, Debbie, that Bailey, you're right, has not been able to be a part of it. She's going to try to come back now, playing with those four fouls, 4.08 to go in the game. Well, I almost think that you go offense, defense with her, but you put her in on a defensive possession. Watch Jeff Walls go right after her in this possession. Look at Cochran posting hard. Look at her on the elbow. Here she is with the ball with Bailey. 
Went right at her, faded away though on the shot. So Bailey was able to hold her ground. Holashinska, Alura blew up the floor. Holy Shinska. <laughs> she is balling. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help but laugh. That's a, I, I like that play on the name, Debbie. That's a good one. I'll give you all the credit. And she is certainly providing a spark for her North Carolina team. No quit in this Tar Heel team. 23 for Holoshinska. Four on the shot clock for Kiana Smith, and she gets the bucket. That basket gives Louisville six players in double figures. Now they got to get a couple of stops in a row here to not allow North Carolina to hang around. Bailey. Might have gotten herself a little extra space, but gets oh, the basket. A little chicken wing, a little chicken wing down there. You know what? Look where she catches the ball, though. Two feet in the paint at the front of the rim. You can't stop that. You're not going to stop her from scoring when she catches it that deep. Tough pass for Cochran to hang on to, but Dixon tracks it down. See, there, there's a shot clock issue on this because this was not a change of possession. So good job by the officials to catch that, and they'll take it back down to 10 seconds because the, the shot clock had been reset to 20. Good catch on that. 10 it is. Evans dishes to Cochran. The bench counting it down. Kiana Smith trying to make Holoshinska go left. Oh, Bailey on. blocked by Dixon. Oh my. Hey, hey, Elizabeth Dixon likes starting. I think she likes that role in the starting lineup. <laughs> She has been fantastic. I mean, she helps and she recovers. It's a classic help and recover. Three-point basket is good off the inbounds play. And Holoshinska now has a new season high. She had 24 in the last game. That was a season high. She's now at 26. We haven't seen the horn set from Jeff Walls. They go to that late. Van Lee won't go. Not look now, Debbie, but it is a single-digit lead for Louisville. Oh. Bailey trying to cut into that more. It'll be a foul against Olivia Cochran, her third. So here's one thing to, to think about as the game winds down here. You know, for Louisville, they had a 32-point lead, and they subbed. And when they subbed, combined with Janelle Bailey picking up her fourth, North Carolina went on a run. So Jeff Walls has been concerned about the fatigue of his team. Well, his starters have now had to play extra minutes in the second half than what they typically would have with a 32-point lead. Plus the mental duress of again being in a late tight game. Now it does chisel you and make you stronger, but every night you can't be putting yourself in that position. Look what happened to NC State. They put themselves in that position tonight and they lost. Had a tremendous effort, NC State. Camille Hobby hitting a three at the buzzer, an unlikely three to push that one into overtime, but Virginia Tech yeah. just took it over in that overtime period. And, and you know what? Camille Hobby, since you brought her up, she's a player that doesn't get a lot of minutes, waited her turn, worked her butt off, managed the process, didn't quit, and gets rewarded when she gets an opportunity. There's too many players today that just quit or transfer, put their name in the portal if it's not going their way. Well, Bailey will come out there. Looks like that is her fifth foul. It was an offensive foul called, so she's done. One minute left in the game. 
North Carolina's made a game of it here late. Louisville trying to hang on, remain unbeaten, remain number one, avoid the upset yeah. curse that has caught both the number two and three teams in the country tonight. Well, that's a, a bucket that might have just put the final stamp on the game. I mean, I don't know how you can lose Holoshinska at this point in the game. You got to know where she is. She's been the best for the Tar Heels. Season high 26 tonight for Petra Holoshinska, the graduate transfer out of Illinois. But Louisville is going to escape, Debbie, despite, as you mentioned, having to push for some more minutes. Dana Evans had to play 35 minutes tonight after playing all but three minutes in the last three games. But Louisville does. Hang on.